11 Amazing Airline Secrets You Didn't Know Number 11 Precious Time If the pressure in a plane's cabin drops, the overhead oxygen masks will either automatically be released from the overhead compartment, or the flight attendant will hopefully press the button to activate them. Then, you know the drill, put on your mask before assisting others. Then you and your travel companions breathe in a limitless amount of oxygen and all is well, right? Well, as it turns out, those oxygen masks only provide enough air for an average of 15 minutes depending on the aircraft. What may sound like not enough time at first makes sense when you think that A. There isn't that much room to store oxygen on a plane and still make them light enough to accommodate you and your snazzy match luggage, and B. The pilots are trained in situations where the cabin loses pressure to immediately dive to an altitude where there is enough air to breathe. Of course, this may be more difficult if you're flying over the Himalayas. In that case, make sure you practice holding your breath once a day and bring your skis. Also, when oxygen masks first drop, it is not only oxygen that you will inhale, as it takes time for the two chemicals used to create the oxygen to work their magic. This process also produces the smell like that of something burning. So don't be alarmed, the plane is probably not on fire. Number 10. Duration Inflation If your pilot ever brags about arriving to your destination early, wait until the plane is safely on the ground, and then call him a liar. What he really should have said was that the plane was on time. You see, airline companies for years have been exploiting our lack of knowledge about flight travel. Who has the time to sit down and calculate the relationship between the plane's acceleration due to gravity, launch angle, and initial velocity to get a real flight time when we are busy worrying about the awkward conversations with our relatives that await us at our destination? The airline company smartly embellished the flight duration on our tickets in a practice called schedule padding in order to compensate for any delays, like those caused by almost forgetting to fill the fuel tank or exterminating gremlins hiding in the wheel wells. This may sound ridiculous, but sometimes when a plane is notably delayed, the airline companies will flat out lie about what caused it in order to keep the peace. So you never really know if it was due to inclement weather or a pilot forgetting to set his alarm. Even so, when your flight is quote unquote early, it still is a nice feeling, so we will look the other way, even though it's corporate psychological trickery. Number 9. All-Powerful Pilot An airplane in mid-flight is kind of like its own nation, so who do the people turn to as their El Presidente in times of turmoil or crisis? Why? The captain, of course. Given that the captain helms the ship and is the leader of the crew, his position comes with several special authorizations when the plane is in the air. The pilot in command can order any passenger or crew member to be handcuffed or restrained until the police take over on landing. They can also violate any regulations set by the Federal Aviation Administration or ignore suggestions of the air traffic control if they deem it necessary and can justify their actions once grounded. Their powers also allow them to fine people for misconduct or take down the will of a dying passenger. Number 8. Wastewater. Have you ever seen a flight attendant drinking the in-flight coffee or tea? No? Well, this is because they know something you don't. The tap water on a plane is often chock full of nasty bacteria. This is due to the fact that the tanks that hold the water are very difficult to fully clean and aren't required to be very often. Also, the hoses that are used to pump out the waste from the bathroom are sometimes used interchangeably as the ports for the water and waste tanks are very close to each other. The tanks are bleached regularly, and the odds of a crew member switching up the hoses isn't common, but the percentage of bacteria in an airplane water commonly exceeds waters from a tap at home by a substantial margin. This only adds strength to the argument that people who brush their teeth on a plane are strange. Number 7. Runway Compass If you have ever been looking out the window of a plane watching the numbers on the runway go whizzing by and started to panic because of the seeming random nature of them, or thinking to yourself that you are glad you aren't the one flying the plane because you can't make heads or tails of the markings, you will now learn the elusive secret. It turns out that these numbers are actually made to be very easy to interpret for the pilots and are quite simple for even people who aren't in the field of aviation. These numbers actually each correspond to a degree on a compass, a number from 1 to 36 for every 10 of the 360 degrees. The pilots use these numbers to make sure they are heading down the right one way and relay that info to air traffic control, who make sure no one else is coming in the opposite direction. Speaking of which, as most runways can be used in either direction, they typically have two numbers on them, symbolizing the degrees away from north they are. For example, if they are traveling on a runway that goes exactly east and west, the runway will feature the numbers 9 for west and 27 for east. If this compass talk still has your head spinning, at least you can rest assured that you now know you weren't cut out to be a pilot. Number 6. Tarmac Schmarmac You hear the word tarmac a lot in the news when reporters are generalizing about the part of an airport, the runway, where the planes take off, the taxiway, the path leading to the runway, or the apron, where planes dock. But the fact is, this term means nothing in aviation terms. If you were to call it a tarmac to a pilot, you'd most assuredly be made fun of behind your back. So where do we get the term tarmac? Well, it actually is a shortened version of the word tarmacodome, which was a material that at the turn of the 20th century was frequently used for paving roads. 
It was initially used for the paving of runways as well, but as planes got bigger, it could no longer withstand their immense weight. The origin of using the word to describe the runway and apron areas probably got started from the fact that in the United Kingdom, tarmac is a word commonly used to describe any kind of asphalt, just as the word Kleenex is slang for tissues in some places. So someone probably reported about an incident on the asphalt of a runway, leading it to be misinterpreted thereafter as meaning the entire airplane playground. Number five. In the dark. If you have ever been flying at night and thought the airplane's lights were dimmed in order for you to catch some shut-eye, think again. The dimming of a cabin's light actually has a more functional purpose than helping you dream away your taxing time spent in airborne confinement. It is to help you survive an emergency situation. If the lights were fully on in the event of a crash landing, it would be difficult for you to see if power was lost in the plane or you were outside. So, airlines have taken the precautionary measure to dim the lights so that this adjustment would be quicker. This can be crucial in helping you see the sharks that circle a watery wreckage or the hungry hyenas prowling about when your flight over Uganda goes down. Number 4. Jacket Snatchers you might not be checking for one of the biggest items that can be vital to surviving an airplane crash, but you really should start. One of the first things a person should do after marking your armrest territory is to check under their seat to make sure that there is in fact a life jacket where it is supposed to be. Why? Because they have a tendency to be taken as souvenirs by people who are on the flight ahead of you. If it shocks you that someone would dare to steal something that could save someone's life, welcome to the thoughtful world we live in. In defense of the indefensible, most people don't know that the flight crew doesn't go seat by seat and double check the life jackets. This is usually difficult because there is a quick turnaround before the next flight, though we wouldn't mind them taking the extra time. In 2014, a man named Benjamin Wenzel was arrested after a flight attendant spotted him shoving two life jackets into his carry-on. Wenzel had planned to take the jackets home as prank gifts for his friends, but luckily was apprehended before he could risk someone's life for a giggle. Unfortunately, most life jacket thieves aren't caught, so make sure you let someone know immediately if yours is missing. Number three. Looks fine to me. Another scary effect of planes having quick turnarounds between departures and arrivals is that the flight crew doesn't have enough time to clean anything. Though they clean the bathrooms after every flight, the attendants aren't required to wipe down tray tables or clean the blankets and pillows that were used the flight before. Most airlines only require their crews to do this before the first flight of the day. This means that the tray table you were eating on may have been used only minutes earlier to change a diaper, and that blanket and pillow you were snuggling up with may have just been the cuddle buddy for a drooly, flu-filled flyer. Though the headphones they pass out come in plastic packages, those too are frequently recycled without being sterilized. So, your ears could become home to someone else's wax. Though these fictional scenarios are extreme examples, it goes without saying that you should probably always fly with baby wipes and a hand sanitizer. Number 2. Latrine Latch You may have asked yourself, what happens if someone gets injured in an airplane bathroom? Or what if your child needs assistance but can't open the inside lock? Well, these questions have a simple answer that not many people know about. It turns out there is a secret latch on the outside of the bathroom door that can unlock them from the outside. On most airplanes, this latch or knob is hidden under the sign that says lavatory, so that only attendants know how to access it. So those of you trying to sneak off and enjoy a quick smoke, or like to overstay your welcome in, as Jerry Seinfeld puts it, your own personal apartment on the plane, be forewarned. These commodes aren't as sacred as your own. Number one. We don't need no stinking vouchers. If you have ever been through a flight delay that seemed never-ending, the reward of receiving a flight voucher from the airline seems like a slap in the face to the compensation you probably deserve. And a lot of the time, you may plan on using the voucher for a future trip that may well never come. So the hours of agony you spent listening to them push back the flight time 30 minutes 15 times for having to sustain your life force with $12 Cinnabons was all for nothing. But there is a way you can at least be instantly satisfied or make sure that you are given justly amends. You can eschew the notion of a voucher and demand cold, hard cash. Well, actually a check, but still. The airline has to accommodate this request, and if they say they can't, they are either lying or unaware of the regulations. In fact, depending on how long you were delayed and the ramifications of lateness, you can receive up to $1,200 right then and there, which most likely is more than whatever silly piece of paper they snidely apologize with. Also, if you ever find yourself in a situation where the airline loses your bags, or they are delayed by being on another flight, you could be compensated upwards of $3,000 on a domestic flight, and half of that if you were flying international. Of course, this depends on each individual circumstance and how long your possessions were delayed. But if the items in your bag were time-sensitive, or not having them was extremely detrimental to your trip, you could deserve the maximum payout. Subscribe for more videos.